playgrounds with metal slides the hot does the heat them yeah that is not looking good for me i'm like I, if i saw that nowadays i'm not going in the playground this wasn't like, something that, that people were on all the time and that looks like my coding module keep hearing people say that this is like the pg version of what was going on but if anyone wants to give me the explicit one look the comment in the comments below do a little cheeky look don't, don't make it too obvious drop hints drop hints because youtube will just flag it Hi right, guys, I'm back again with another Resty of History video. Today we'll be checking out 980s things that kids no longer do. Now, me being a Gen Z Brit born in the 2000s, uh, I'm very curious to see kind of what you guys got up to back in the day. Especially, I feel like this would have been like amongst you Gen Xers in this realm. So you guys, of course, if you love how I'm doing these kind of videos, what are you going to do? Subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. Don't forget to like this video so I know you guys want to see more. Let's get these videos pushed into the algorithm. I've, and of course, guys, of course, um, I've got exclusive bonus content coming out on the Patreon. Um, I've already got stuff that we're putting on the screen, like 1980 sitcoms with Married the Children, some Prince reactions, some album reviews, some just general videos that are um, exclusive that I want to post on YouTube, and just some early release access to a lot of these videos I do post on YouTube. So if you guys are interested in any of that, get in the description. As always, you can donate to the channel as well. We linked in my description to so like my PayPal. But um, yeah, guys, look. That being said, let's see what you Gen Xers were getting up to, or boomers, or millennials, or whatever it was in this period. But let's let's go, guys. Let's go. It's hard to believe, but the 1980s ended more than 30 years ago, and the world has changed a lot since that time. Face. Things that were once considered normal are now old-fashioned or taboo. Right. In this right, video, we so. will have a look back at some of the 1980s things that kids no longer do. That's interesting. That's an interesting pick. Kids today may still have art class, but the projects they do are a bit different. Mm. There used to okay. be an emphasis on crafting items that served a purpose, and nothing did that more than a good old-fashioned <laughs> ashtray. It wasn't meant for the students, but rather their parents or grandparents that mm. smoked. Oh, wow. Gifting them an ashtray was the perfect way to show how much you love them. Is it? Is it? Do you know, that is so typical of, you know, when I've done so many videos going back into, especially this time period of the 1970s, 80s, just the time period where it was smoking, especially, wasn't like as much of a taboo as it is now. There's a stigma around it. Obviously, back then, you're in art sessions, you're crafting um, ash ashtrays or like these little bowls for your for the for your parents to show them how much you love them. Like that's I've never <laughs> ever heard of that or seen that before. So to find out that that was actually what was going on back in the day, that's so interesting like you guys let me know if you guys are doing any of that because that's long wow. before we had inkjet and laser printers we had an incredibly noisy dot matrix printer okay these bad boys used a special kind of paper that we don't see anymore what? it had holes that were punched on the sides which allowed the printer to grasp the paper and then guide it through oh, that's why once your okay. printing job was finished you had to tear each sheet of paper apart along the perforated ends not only that, but the sides with the holes had to be removed as well. Uh, it definitely wasn't a quick process, but at the <coughs> time, we sure thought it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, how long did these printing sessions last when you're trying to print out paper? Um, because that seemed like it took a long time. And those dotted lines on the side, I do remember like having paper that is like that nowadays. I remember having to rip off the ends as well, but it wasn't, I don't think it was because it came from a printer. I think it was just because of that's the design of the paper. But this actually gives me a whole new perspective of when I see that dotted like lines on the paper. When I, when I was in college, especially, I didn't use paper. I just used my iPad to write and everything. Like I, I literally didn't have any pen and paper to write with. I just had my, 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 my Bluetooth pen and my iPad and I had my highlighters because I touched this, the, the iPad colors on the screen. And my pencil case was digital. Like, I'm telling you, times are changing. But yeah, I would love to know a bit more about that. But that's interesting. I didn't know that. Saturday mornings were a special time for a kid in the 80s. They Saturday got up morning. early just to sit in front of the television with a big old bowl of sugary cereal and then catch up on some cartoons until about lunchtime, oh, unless your mom kicked you out of the house first. <laughs> right, this right, was right, a routine right. that could be seen in practically every household that had children. Okay. Cereal in the 80s was pretty awesome, wow. and there were a lot of different kinds available. Kids' cereals were packed with sugar, and parents really didn't care. Not anymore. They just wanted kids to sit down oh. and shut up, but that was pretty well impossible <laughs> with a huge sugar rush. 
Cereal boxes were a lot of fun, with all the artwork, puzzles, stories, and games on them. They also had some pretty incredible wow. prizes inside, and if you had a sibling, then it could be a real challenge to get to them first. Wow. There's, I feel like there's, there's definitely an, an onus on parents just kicking you out the yard. Do you know what I'm saying? And you guys just going outside and just being stranded outside for however long during the day. Like, that's just different. Like, I, our generation, a lot of people I know spend most of, their, most of their time in the house on their phones. So to see people being kicked outside, like, that's literally like the opposite of what I feel like kids are doing now. And if you had a sibling, then it could be a real challenge to get to them first. Because I'd be inside a lot. Wireless phones are certainly the norm today, but there was a time when phones were connected to a base with a cord. These cords were coiled, stretchy, and the perfect fidget item wow. while you're on the phone. I've never Did used you ever wrap the cord around your finger? Or perhaps you even wrapped yourself up like a mummy. <laughs> I've seen those in movies, like I've never actually experienced like having one of those. I think the earliest phone I can remember having was like with this like landline that you could take off. It didn't have the coil like wire around it. But these, I've seen them in movies. They look cool. I probably would have done the same thing. And yeah, like I just, again, times have changed, man. I've never like seen one of those in person. Or perhaps you even wrapped yourself up like a mummy. Phone cords may have been fun, oh, but one. having someone listening into your conversation wasn't. Most households had one phone line, but at least two phones in the house yeah. connected to it. Really? If you were very careful about it, you could totally pick up the other phone and hear some juicy conversations. Really? These are just some of the things that we what? did before the age of cell phones. Wow. Playgrounds wow. today have gotten so... Listen on, on phone calls. That's, that's like some CIA government type thing. I didn't realize you could do that back in the day just by picking up the line. Like that's, that's actually funny. You guys got to let me know if you've got any stories about that. Soft. Even the ground surrounding them is often cushioned. The playground equipment itself right. is made of plastic and it has a little give to it. Mm -hmm. But the playgrounds of the 80s, they were Ooh. made of metal. Ooh. This solid steel got hot in the summer and could deliver third degree burns. Aye. They had sharp edges that could slice and they could definitely break some bones if you fell Ooh. on them. Ooh. The equipment was hard and so was the ground. Each and every playground had its own element of danger. Oh my gosh. Today, yeah, the playgrounds, like, I heard Karen Morgan talking about that. It seems like she's actually is conf being confirmed here. Playgrounds with metal slides, the hot, there's the heat that's going to be caught, like just building up on them slides in the summertime. Yeah, that is not looking good for me. I'm like, I, if I saw that nowadays, I'm not going in the playground. Nor do kids nowadays even go in the playground, which is another thing. I, I generally think in the next couple of years, playgrounds are just become, are going to become obsolete or obsolete, whatever you want to call it, whatever the word, like just non-existent. People aren't going to be using them. Unless it's for like really small adolescent toddlers at least want to take outside. But like teenagers, like you're not going to see us in the, in the park unless, we're, unless they're doing something that is, they shouldn't be. But I digress. But its own element of danger. Let me not, let me not snake on all my Gen Z. Kids. Today, computers are a necessary item in every household. Many kids start using one in some form or fashion long before they enter kindergarten. Of course, of course. The fact is, computers have become a required item for most schools. Naturally. But in the 80s, you were lucky if there was even one computer in the house. This wasn't something that, that people were on all the time, and people what had little that? idea how to use the DOS-based operating system. That looks like my code As time progressed, so did the computer, and we were able to learn a little bit more slowly than what kids do today. Yeah, that computer looks like one of these coding programs that I used to do, like for it's like a Python script, man. Like, what is that? <laughs> like the screen, like this, it's like, what do you call that kind of screen? Like, what do you, what could you even do on that? that like, did you, did you have internet at that time? Cause was the internet like booming? That's that's you guys gotta fill me in on that as well, cause I, I'm getting the timeline a bit messed up. But what would you be doing on the computer? Like, what would you, what were you able to do? Like, play games, like research. Like, I'm confused. Well, I'm not. I'm curious. A bit more slowly than what kids do today. Safety standards in the 80s were a little different, and especially so when you compare it to the earlier part of the decade. By the mid 80s, mandatory seatbelt wearing laws were just beginning to get passed. Wow, okay, Prior that's 80s. At that time, kids rode in the bed of pickup trucks and crammed into the far back part of station wagons. Bouncing and sliding around was just part of the fun. 
It was like your very own mosh pit, and there really was a science to try and keep from getting hurt. <laughs> science to try and... Once those wow. seatbelt laws were put fun. into place, many adults found themselves in an interesting predicament. What if they had more kids than seatbelts? <laughs> no problem. Right. Just buckle two or three kids in oh, one wow. spot with one seatbelt. They'll just... make it all right. Again, I, all I know is seatbelts, but from the times that you guys didn't have seatbelts, a lot of you guys watching that didn't have it, they seemed like a lot of fun. I would have enjoyed that if I was a kid. Kids in the 80s loved playing outside, which worked out great because parents didn't even want them in the house. From what I've heard. When Saturday morning cartoons were over, kids were expected to get lost. Go outside, <laughs> go anywhere, just don't stay in here. That's pretty much what every parent said. Kids yep, played yep. outside with no parental supervision, and that was perfectly fine. They were free to wander miles from home, and parents had no idea where they were. Crazy. But there was one rule. Crazy. Be home before the street lights came on. Yep. Yep, and apparently you guys, I know some of you guys will be saying stuff like, oh, this guy's only, like, Radio Pistry is only talking about, like, the, the watered-down... Cool, like nice version of things well you guys you guys have, have heard is it was a lot more than what he explained just then so if you have any interesting stories please comment down below but be careful because youtube might restrict some comments so but i'm now really curious because i'm yet to see what was really going down when you guys are outside school playgrounds weren't the only thing that was unforgiving some of the activities that kids did in pe class were also pretty rough Remember playing dodgeball? Everyone had to participate wow, okay. because it was part of your grade. Dodgeballs have a distinctive smell, and who could ever forget the sound as it bounced off of someone? <laughs> Today, many schools no longer allow this game to be played, and wall ball is another one that could be pretty tough. That's true. That's Apple true. watches I've were nowhere to be seen in the 80s. Kids were just happy to have a simple digital watch from Casio or Timex. Okay. Of course, if it was a calculator watch, then you were super cool. <laughs> it was sort of a rebellious thing to have calculator because a lot of watch. teachers said that we would never have a calculator everywhere we went. What? Boy, were they ever wrong. Look at us today with cell phones. Remember the GoBots watch? It had the appearance of a normal digital watch, but it could transform robots. into a robot. What? Those were pretty popular until the Swatch watches came on the market. Are you serious? Okay, this watch stuff is actually... I was not thinking watches look like that back in the day. A watch that turns into like some transformer and then a watch with a calculator on it. I had no clue that was a thing. And even then, that's just... I was not expecting... That's caught me off guard, you know, Fez. I, you guys let me know if you had any of those because I've never heard of those. I've seen, never seen them. And I would look you want to try one though. They came in every color and design imaginable, and to be super cool, you needed one with a faceplate or rubber bands on them. <laughs> to be super cool. Chalk in school was the norm, and every classroom had their very own chalkboard, wow. which chalk was messy cool. but fun. No matter chalk what board. class it was, there was always that one kid who wanted to run his fingernails across the chalkboard and oh, make everyone cringe. I just got cringe For some reason or another, they are no longer in schools. Some say it was because of computers, while others say it was due to health issues like asthma. But one really? thing that every kid enjoyed was going outside to bang the erasers and knock the chalk out. What? It was a great way to get out of class, and most kids can no longer do that. Yeah, affairs. I mean, I can't relate to any of that, but to see that there was chalk on it and then someone scratching their hand through the chalk, like, please. I literally cringe so hard even thinking about it. I don't even imagine that. I'm getting so many goosebumps even now, but yeah, whoever did that was a bad man kid who deserved everything that, got, that happened to him. But just to sit or hurt, <laughs> or they, them, she, because nowadays you never know the, the, what pronouns people are using. But to say, um, I just, this is just, shocking to me like wow i can't like I've, I've never got to experience that i never knew what i was like out of class and most kids can it no longer do that though. chalk on the board yeah waterbeds started coming on strong in the 70s and by the 80s they were in many households if you didn't what? have one then you probably knew someone who did what? Why? it was sort of a bizarre feeling to be floating on water while you slept but at That's the same cool. time it was really relaxing 
Today, almost no one has them, so many kids have no idea what they're missing out on. Loki, low key, yeah, I've never had the had been on one of those, but it does kind of those look fun. I'm like, I'm surprised people don't really do that as much nowadays. I would have liked to experience a water bread like with the water flowing, but then it's like, what if you just what if it just bursts? You know, that's just a long day. Yeah, I do prefer my mattress here. I do prefer it. Yeah. And so many kids have no idea again, what they're missing what out like. on. I don't know what it was like, so I can't compare. Peanut butter in the '80s was huge. We had peanut butter candy, cookies, crackers, and of course we brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to school. Now many schools will no longer allow peanut butter items to be brought to school thanks Why? to allergies. Uh, Most yeah. kids in the 80s had never heard of this type of allergy, but if you had it, then it must have been a scary time period to live Ooh, through. Right, right. I've seen peanut butter Bicycles in the 80s were everything to a kid. BMX bikes were the most popular and kids were always riding them or jumping some pretty gnarly ramps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. gave kids a sense of freedom that they couldn't get anywhere else. There were countless adventures just waiting to happen on the seat of a bicycle. Wow. They were also a great indicator to see where all the kids in the neighborhood were. Mm. The yard with the bikes was where everyone was. Makes sense. Makes sense. In the yeah, now now I see people on like scooters, electric scooters, like kids, right, on electric scooters, or they'll be on just a bike that you bought from. At least in London, there's these bikes you can just like rent out, you can just drive around. Um, but yeah, it's rare that you just see kids just ride riding on on bikes nowadays, and, and it's not with their parents, and you don't have the helmet and these like safety wheels on. Um, or just in general, like I rarely see people riding bikes nowadays. I used to see it a lot more often when I was younger, but yeah, again, that's one of those ones that is, is becoming more obsolete, man. I don't see that as often. Ladies, kids were busy enjoying life. From my, from my perspective. They went out roller skating, bowling, to the mall, and so much more. Since 80s kids did not have cell phones, the payphone was something that they all had to master. If kids did not have a quarter, they would then call Home Collect to let their parents know when they were ready. Okay. If you're lucky, you may still see a payphone here and there, but does it work? Probably not, and it's right. unlikely that any kid today has ever used one. Never used one. He's right. Valentine's Day for a kid in the 80s at school was completely different. If kids are even allowed to participate in handing out cards, then they usually have to bring enough for the whole class. Back then, okay. you could choose who you wanted to give one to, and it was more of a social contest to see who received the most. Oh, wow. That's cool. For those kids growing up today, this may all seem like a foreign universe, but it really <laughs> was a beautiful time. Okay, right. 80s kids had more freedom to experience the world around them firsthand. That's true. The 1980s really was the last decade where people weren't buried in computer screens. That's right, Storm. Do you have any special memories of the 80s? Yeah, to be honest, guys, um, for those of you watching that may have been able to experience this time period, like, he's right. Like, obviously, nowadays, I'm sure you guys are already aware, everything's a lot more, like, just influenced with technology or infused with technology. And, um, you know, this really did seem like the, the, the cool golden period of childhood memories about the Internet. And um, I love kind of just hearing some of you guys' stories. Um, like, a lot of you guys says type a lot, like... <laughs> That's something that I'm also getting used to with, like, I think a lot of people that are maybe older than me. I think a lot of kids nowadays, we, do, we use more emojis and we type more in abbreviated letters and we're just like, we don't really type on comment sections as much. But, like, you guys will be telling me paragraphs. And, you know, I try to read for as much as I can. So I love to just see what you guys are going through. Um, and, yeah, let me know some childhood memories. Let me know what you guys are really getting up to because I keep see, hearing people say that this isn't really, the, this is like the PG version of what was going on. But if anyone wants to give me the explicit one, look, comment in the comments below, a little, do a little cheeky look. Make sure YouTube, don't, don't make it too obvious. Drop hints, drop hints because YouTube will just flag it. But, yeah, guys, look, this has been my reaction to this. Again, majority of these things that I, I would not even be able to relate to. And it did feel almost like an alternate universe. I don't know how that makes a lot of you guys watching feel like times are changing um it's kind of bittersweet i guess but um yeah what a recap guys of course look let comment on the pink heart if you made this is point or hashtag flex because i know some of you guys watching may be struggling with the emojis and of course guys as always i've been your boy j flex there's been 980 things that kids no longer do and for those of you guys that made this point in the video you guys have been absolutely wonderful and i'll see you guys in the next one peace